In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use the tiling path effect in Inkscape to create some unique and interesting pattern designs. So to get started, I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool over here and I'm gonna click and drag on the canvas to draw a square and I'm gonna hold the control key so that it draws a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then I'm gonna convert it to a path by going to path and selecting object to path. And then I'll grab my nodes tool and I wanna take this node right here and press the delete key to get rid of it so that we have this triangular shape. So now I'll grab my selection tool. I'm gonna to hold control and scale this down a little bit. And now I'm gonna open up my path effects menu by going to path and selecting path effects. From this menu, I'm gonna click on this drop down over here and the path effect I'm looking for is called tiling, which is located right here. You can just click on that and now we have the tiling path effect applied. And what this path effect does is it creates copies of the object that are all linked to each other. So as you can see in the tool settings over here, right now we have three rows and three columns. I'm gonna increase that to six for each side. So I'm gonna use six rows and six columns and I'll zoom out a little bit. And what I'll do now is, if you notice over here, we have this mirroring mode. If I cycle through these different options, you can see what it does to the shape. I'm able to create all of these different types of patterns using this one shape just by choosing these different mirroring modes. So I'll cycle through these real quickly just so you can see what they all do. And the one I will go with for this demonstration here is this one, or this one over here. And once you have that set, you can convert this to an actual pattern by going to Object, Pattern, and selecting Object to Pattern. And now you can grab your Nodes tool and take this node over here in the bottom right corner and scale this down. You can hold your Control key to lock the aspect ratio. And now you have a proper pattern and you can use this as a pattern fill for any other object that you'd like to apply it to. You can use this handle to rotate it and this handle to move it around and you get the idea. So that's just one example of how you can create a pattern using this path effect. Now let's go over another way in which you can use this path effect. I'm gonna grab my circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and click and drag to draw a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm gonna convert this to a path by going to path, object to path. And then I'm gonna grab my nodes tool. I'm gonna select all of these nodes and I wanna convert these to corner nodes by coming up here and selecting this option in the tool settings menu that says make selected corner. Make selected nodes corner when you hover your cursor over it. And then I'm gonna select just this node down here and press the delete key to get rid of it. And then I'll hold my control key and click on this handle to delete it. And then holding control still, I'll click on this handle to delete it. So now we have a half circle. Now I'll take these two nodes right here and I'm gonna insert a new node halfway between them by clicking this button up here that says insert new nodes between selected nodes. And now we have a new node in the middle there. And I'm gonna take just this node right here, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it, hold the control key and click on this handle to get rid of it. And now we have this quarter circle, which is what I was initially going for. So I'll take my selection tool now, I'm gonna scale this down a little bit, and now I'm gonna apply the tiling path effect to this shape. So I'll come back over here to my path effects menu. I will choose tiling. I'm gonna increase the rows and columns to six again, just like I did previously. And I'll use this setting over here for the mirroring mode. And you can see we have this unique abstract pattern that we created just by creating a quarter circle and applying that mirror mode. Now, another thing you can do down here in the settings is you can apply uh, a scale, for example, if I change the scale percentage to 10%, you can see what happens now. Let me zoom out a little bit to show you. You can see the scale, it starts out small and progresses, progresses to larger shapes. And you can change the orientation of that scale using these settings over here. So if I cycle through these, you can see what that does. So I'll put that back to where it was and I'll change this back to zero. And one other thing I wanted to show you with these shapes is this original shape right here is linked to all of the other shapes. So if I make any changes to this shape, they're all gonna be applied to the other shapes. So if I grab my nodes tool, I could take this node over here and move it around and you can see what happens. It's sort of like a kaleidoscope sort of effect. And I can use this to create abstract patterns just like that. And then I could take this side right here, I could take this path and curve that in and take that path and curve that in. And just like that, we've created a really unique abstract pattern tile using that path effect. Let's go over another example of what you can do with this path effect. I'm gonna grab the stars and polygons tool. I'm gonna to choose the star option in the tool settings menu up here. I wanna make sure the corners is set to five 
and the spoke ratio is set to 0 0.375 and both the rounded and randomized set to zero. So go ahead and pause the video and enter in those values if you don't have them set already. And then I'm gonna click and drag to draw my star and then I'm gonna hold the control key and move the cursor in an upward direction to ensure that the star is upright. If you're going to the right or down, you're not gonna get that effect. So I want it to go straight up and again, holding the control key and we have a nice upright star like that. And I'll take this, oops, let me undo that. I'll grab my selection tool now, I'll move this over. I'm gonna scale this down so that I can create tiled clones of it. And I'll come over here to my path effects menu and, ap and apply the tiling path effect. And now I'm gonna apply more of these rows and columns, I'll use six. And one thing you can do with these tiles is you can create an offset. So if I come over here and change the offset value to 50% by example, you can see what happens there. It takes the horizontal row and offsets them by 50% so that this star right here is halfway between these two stars up here. And if I change the orientation to vertical, you can see what that does. It creates an alternating sort of effect. And if I choose this mirroring mode, you can see what we get there. We have this nice star pattern where these ones are upright, these ones are upside down, and they are offset from each other by 50%. One final thing I'd like to point out about the tiling path effect is how you can work with it in conjunction with the shape builder tool. So if I grab the circles and ellipses tool and I hold control and click and drag to create a circle, I can grab my selection tool and come back over here to the path effects menu. And if I choose the tiling path effect, I'm going to add 10 rows and columns this time, just so we have a larger sample size to work with. And if I zoom out, if I come over here to my Shape Builder tool, you can see we can work with this as if it were any other shape. We don't have to convert it to a path. So I can take these shapes right here and use the, the Shape Builder tool to create new shapes of the intersecting areas between them. And once you're finished, you can just go back to your selection tool and you can see I was able to create this pattern depicting these peanut-like shapes, or I guess you can call them bicycle chain links. But I just wanted to use that as an example to demonstrate what you can do by using the tiling path effect alongside the shape builder tool. So I'm sure as you can imagine, you can really let your creativity run wild using these tools. And uh, that's how you can create those pattern shapes using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.